thinking about quoting scripture and memorizing the word of God. There are little plans and programs that have entered the so-called church where we have memory verses, Bible verses to retain. 
It is good to retain verses, but it is better to put it into effect. Amen. There's a man that visits our nation, a Muslim who comes down with Josh McDowell and these men to debate the Word of God, the authenticity of the Bible. And debating the Bible and sitting in the in, in a, a large stadium and talking about God is not simply good enough. We should not be hearers only, but we must be doers of the Word of God. Amen. And so when this man comes out and he shares, he quotes scripture such as all of us put together could not quote. He quotes from the book of Genesis and he attempts to go through the whole of the Old Testament, hits the New Testament, and quotes Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and gets into the epistles, this Muslim, but he does not know Jesus. Amen. And when we look at the word know, having a knowledge of Jesus, it is used oftentimes in the Greek text, where it, it is used with this intention of having intercourse, Amen. close relationship with Jesus. Knowing Jesus does not mean knowing a verse of scripture. Knowing Jesus does not mean I know the Bible. Knowing Jesus is having a working relationship with him, moment by moment. I like what Brother Fred said. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Psalm 118, 24 says, This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. The trait and the mark of a believer is that is a rejoice. We don't wait for heaven. The psalm says when we get to heaven, we're going to rejoice. But rejoicing begins this side of heaven. Amen. Amen. This is our preparatory ground, Amen. not on the other yeah. side. Amen. God is not going to do cleansing and preparation on the other side. It has to be done here. Amen. But grow, verse 18. But grow. Begins with the conjunction, connective as you call it, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forevermore. Peter begins by using a word that is strange in the so called Christian circles today. There is no such thing as growth in the Christian circle. There is no such thing as movement. There is stagnation. And this has been a burden on my heart when I came to the United States. And I want you to love me when I'm through with what I've said. <laughs> because I'm going to say it anyhow. The nation of America taught the Africans about Jesus. But America, somebody said yesterday at Pentecost, the devil was caught unawares. But the devil has caught America unawares. Amen. This nation is in a slumber. <laughs> this nation is debating about abortion. The nation is debating about who should be in the pulpit homosexuals and God's word has been relegated to a number three and number four because men are debating about the authenticity of God's word. A slumber. Second Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved not unto a man unto God. Amen. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. It is truth that delivers a man and sets him free. Amen. It, is, it has never been error that gets a man out of a rut and out of a situation and out of his fallen state. It is the truth of God's word that is declared emphatically and even dogmatically that gets a man free. The truth sets men and women free. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. He is declared as Savior. He is known as Savior. But very seldom is he known as Lord. 
the question comes to my mind when when we were controlled we were once enemies to the cross now we've become a part of the household of faith when we were enemies to the cross and rebels everybody knew we were rebels but now that we've become a part of the household of faith it is hard to find out who loves jesus it is hard to see the difference in the lifestyle, Christianity is not a name or a term. Christianity should be a lifestyle. Yeah. Amen. And there is a difference in bearing the name and living it. Some words were penned by one of the writers from America, by Prof. Ingersoll. Is death the door that leads to life? We do not know. We hope and we wait. But Paul says in 2 Timothy, 1 and 12. He says, For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep or to guard, says some translations, those things that I have committed unto him, even against that name. Amen. I know in whom I have believed. It is strange today, and I'm going to there are some circles that I move around in, and I'm not a representative of a denomination, neither of a country. I'm a pilgrim. Amen. Touching down in America, but heading for heaven. Amen. Amen. There are circles that I move around in that's, that's disturbing, but I thank God that he put me there. Sometimes it seems like rebellion to those that are slackened lethargic and complacent. Don't preach work salvation, they often tell me, sometimes tell me. Don't preach work salvation. I know it is not by work that we are saved. It is by grace, through faith in Him. But salvation produces work. When a man has had a relationship with Jesus, has a relationship with Jesus, and a man has had an experience with Jesus, and has come to the knowledge of the truth, a man will not sit back and wait for heaven to pop around him. And this is the disturbing factor, is that there is no growth that is taking place in the so-called church today. The church is forever needing a program to beef it up. The church is forever needing something to stir it. The church is forever needing enlightenment. My God, when we have come to the knowledge of the truth, we should know that we have a commitment. We have a duty. We have a responsibility. We have a responsibility in a decaying, dying world. Our responsibility is to let men know that Jesus died for them. He is not in the tomb, he is risen. Amen. Luke chapter 2, verse 40. And the child of Jesus, he was a child, but he grew and waxed strong in the spirit. It is amazing that folk would be content to attain every outside thing but never grow in grace. Never grow in the spiritual arena. Never grow in realizing that God has put us onto the field of battle and conflict. We've not been called to a slumber. We've been called into a battle. Amen. And this is why when Paul writes to the church at Ephesus, the sixth verse, he tells them to put on the whole armor of God. He does not say, wait, God is going to put on the armor. He says, you put on the armor of God. Amen. And we've got to put, there are some things that God is going to do. I know God sent his son so that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, have eternal life. I know eternal life is eternal, but you and I are partakers of eternal life. And whether we are going to partake of it depends on our lifestyle and our walk here. Amen. It's not going to depend on, as they say, the profession of faith that I made. 
There are many professors and very few possessors. God does not want us to be a professing people only, but a possessing people. Joshua could have stood outside of Canaan and professed that he has the land, but not go in and possess the land. There is a difference by standing outside and talking about it. Neighbor, when you come in and you're on the inside, in the midst of it, the three Hebrew boys only knew what the, what the presence and the reality of God's power was when they were in the fiery furnace. When you stand next to the fire, it feels hot, but it is not hot. There's a difference between, difference between feeling and the reality of the heat. Amen. When they got into the furnace, the fire was hot, but Jesus was there. Yeah. And even this heathen man that put them in, when he looked into the fire, he said, I see a fourth man. How many did we get in? I see a fourth. And the visage, the form of the fourth one looks unto the Son of God. Amen. We will not know it by standing on the outside. We will know it by getting into the thick of things. Sound growth often occurs under adverse condition and hardship, oppression. As a black man, I come from Africa classified as a mixed man, if that means anything. God created man. In Africa, South Africa, we do not have the right to vote to the franchise. We have no right. Though I have no right in that nation, I have a right in the kingdom of God. Amen. I may not be able to do many things on that land, which incidentally belongs to God. America does, this land does not belong to white people or Indian people or black people. This land belongs to God. <laughs> the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Psalm 24. The world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. Matthew 5 and 8. The pure in heart shall see God. Who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully? He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Yeah. Lift up your heads over the gates, and be he lifted up the everlasting doors, so that the King of glory might come in. Yeah. There's a teaching that goes about that says, uh, when you pray, believe and God will give you a million dollars. <laughs> yeah. I don't have anything against the people, but I have everything against the teaching. Yeah. It's yeah. bringing a bunch of weaklings and a bunch of backsliders. Yeah. 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 And so one of the translations, new translation says, Matthew 6, 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. That's not what the Bible says. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. And then all these things shall be added unto you. This divine ownership, God is the divine owner of everything. He fashioned it. There's a Proverbs chapter 30 verse 4 that says, Who hath ascended into the heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fist or bound the water up in his garment? Who hath established the ends of the earth? What is his name? What is his son's name? And Moses, when he came to Pharaoh, he came with a name that said, I am, said, let my people go. Amen. And Moses did not get to Pharaoh driving about in a Cadillac and having it easy. Moses had a hard time in presenting what he had to present. Amen. And today the so-called church thinks that it is easy sailing, it is smooth sailing, sitting on the pew and sliding on the pew into heaven. It does not work that way. Amen. It works, seemingly works that way because we've accumulated frost in the pulpit and ice in the pews. Amen. The church has become nothing but a cold storm. Growth occurs wherever we may be. If you're in God, you're in the God. 
if you're not in God, you're controlled by the devil. Amen. There's no intermediary. There's no uh, state, middle state. Amen. There's no middle ground. You are either for God or you're for the devil. Amen. If you are not in God, you are going to grow in the things that you're engaged in and to the one that you are sold out to. And Paul says in Colossians 3 and 1, if he be risen with Christ, if he be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth at the right hand of the Father. Amazingly, it has become so evident that this material life is ultra important to the believer. The Christian today, the Christian is someone who's dead. But the Christian has someone, is someone now who is alive to the things of this world and dead to the things that pertain to God. If you are risen, Seek those things which are about. 1 Timothy 6.12 Paul says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before witnesses. Lay hold unto eternal life. Let, let me use an illustration from the Old Testament. When Joseph was taken in the 39th chapter, thrown into a hole after that he had shared some truth with his brethren. I saw the sheaves as they bowed down. I saw the eleven stars and the moon and the sun as they bowed down. And there was a disturbance when Joseph said this. When we declare truth today, there is a disturbance. Sometimes they even move you out of the circles they ask you to leave. Amen. But it is better to leave on a high note than to leave on the low note Amen. that the devil has prepared. Amen. They say you start low, you proceed slow, you go higher, and then you take fire. And Joseph, when he got into that hole, it was not a nice experience. But Joseph, when he came out of the hole, got into the palace, and some folk were held on to the luxury of the palace. And the luxury of the palace could have meant that they would have fallen into the temptation of Potiphar's wife. But Joseph was a man who kept his gaze on his God, Hebrews 12, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. You want to know why people have trouble today in living right, in walking right, in enjoying this life, it is because their gaze is not on Jesus. Amen. Amen. One teacher said to me, I don't want to get involved in these things because of the televangelist. A televangelist did not die for me. And so today the excuses that are being used in not Submitting to the authority and the lordship of Christ is man. But you see, no man died for you or for me. We've got to do that which God had commissioned us to do. While Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, he also said, Go. Go into all the world. We have a commission, beloved. Our commission is not to gather on a Sunday morning. Or whenever the Lord's day may be for some, it, it is not to gather on that particular hour and go out and, and peel up and forget about the things. It is to come in and go. A man, listen, a sheep. My wife is a farmer. When a sheep has eaten and overeaten and it lies down, it cannot get up again. It needs somebody to pull it back up. But when the sheep eats and it keeps moving, it digests and it stays on the move. And so too with the child of God. When we have eaten, we come together refreshing waters. We have been challenged. We have been refreshed. 
We are up charged with God's word. We need to go out and let somebody know about God's word. Amen. It's not good enough for me to sit in the meeting and enjoy the blessings of God and do nothing about it. Someday somebody told me that Jesus loved me. Someday you're going to have to tell somebody or be accountable. Amen. Amen. We can only grow when we stand firm, Galatians 5 and 1, stand firm in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made you free. When Joseph got into the palace, it went good for a while, but they put him into the prison. But while Joseph was in the prison, Joseph did not lament or pain over the things that he was missing in the palace. Joseph rejoiced even in the prison. What am I saying? Let me get down to, to the point that I want to make. There are hard times that are going to hit this nation. And I often wonder how many Christians are still going to love Jesus when the hard times hit. There was a message on movie radio. The man preached and he says, when problems come, and America does not know problems, they have a Burger King type of religion, quick manufacturing. Run down the aisle, say a sinner's prayer, don't live as you please. <laughs> sinner's prayer is a man's way. God's way is repentance. Amen. God's way is that we turn from sin and walk and live no longer therein. Amen. But they have this quick formula of saying a verse of scripture and, and saying a little prayer and going out and living in the brothels and sleeping with the next man's wife and they are called the saved. And it is a disturbing factor, beloved, because we should be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Amen. Amen. The things I used to do, I do them. No more. Amen. Amen. When Joseph was in there, he did not contemplate on those things, but Joseph's heart was in the things of God. And even in prison, Joseph could still rejoice in the Lord. Here's my question. If hard times were to come, because I see it on the dollar bill, in God we trust. But I don't see the trust that this word really implies. Amen. You see, there's a difference between saying, I believe, and believing. Amen. The devils believe and they tremble. But when we trust God, when we believe God and take him at his word, neighbor, we will not as the church run to the heathen for help, but the heathen should be coming to the church for help. Amen. Amen. There's a terminology that talks about at the school that I'm at. I won't mention the name. But every person that has a problem needs psychiatric treatment. They need God's word. Amen. Isaiah 26 and the verse 3 says, Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is paid on thee. Amen. You may have a degree in theology, but you may not have peace of mind. A degree in theology never equips a man for heaven. It is a working relationship with Jesus. Amen. Working relationship with Jesus is not an easy one. There are times of testing. So this man says, when hard times come, and they put the gun to your head and they say, do you deny Jesus? And you deny him, he says, you have been saved. So you cannot lose your salvation. And I speak from first-hand experience. These are the circles that I move around in. I'm not going to tell you. These are the circles that I move around in. Once in, always in. Once you've come down the aisle, sit back, relax, and wait for Jesus to come. But these are the teachings. It sounds, if that's how it sounds to me, foolish. Amen. But when I look at God's word in, in Hebrews, the 10th chapter, Brother Fred quoted this last night. I, I don't know if you saw any of my notes. <laughs> there is a term that is used in that 10th chapter from the 21st verse. 
The writer says, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near the Greek term for self meter. Let us draw near continually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I like that, Brother Fred. I, I like that. We should have had more Indians to that. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let us draw near continually. Amen. In full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us draw near continually. Amen. You see, there is salvation from the penalty of sin and the power of sin, but the ultimate salvation is from the presence of sin. Amen. He that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. There is no more enduring. It is an easy type of religious atmosphere that has been created and man has become so slack and complacent that there is no difference today between the church so-called and the world out there. There is no difference. In fact, there is more of the world that has crept in than the church that has crept into the world. Amen. We become so worldly that there's no difference. Verse 27, this is the verse 26 of that chapter 10 of Hebrews. For it we sent willfully. After that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin but a certain fearful looking for, looking for of judgment and a fiery indignation which shall devour advers the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sorer punishment suppose he that he be thought worthy, shall be thought, he be thought worthy, who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God. The, the Greek intention is that we continually call into remembrance. Continually call into remembrance. It is not a one-time thing. It is a daily thing. Amen. We need to walk day by day. Amen. It is never going to be an easy thing. It is going to be day by day. As I walk today, I walk in faith in this day. And I may not know the day of tomorrow, but I know the one who holds tomorrow. Amen. And this is why the believer never fears death. Amen. Amen. The, the, the folk that come over to my nation say God sent them. I, well, I don't know which God. God sent them as missionaries to certain people, and they go and live in an affluent community the people, oppressed people that God sent them to, never see them. And the excuse is that the government would not let them in, which is a lie. The second excuse is that there is danger. If God sent you, Brother Gibbon, God will take care of you. Yeah. <laughs> and if it means that I'm going to, my head will be taken off on that field, then that's how God planned it for me to be. And I will rejoice in that. Because I may be absent from this body, but I'm going to be present with the Lord. Amen. I'm in a straight betwixt two, whether to go up and be with the Lord or, st or to stay here with you. We should continually be mindful of these things that God has not called us to a waterbed, pepper's waterbed. God has called us to do battle. Amen. And Joseph stands up. And becomes from a prison, he becomes a premium. What time do you? No time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Reach on, brother. You're not there. Reach on. I'll take this back to my assembly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you that Brother Lonnie's wife has taken the cock down at the back, so we also don't have. We, this is how we do it in Africa. We don't uh, go by the clock. We go by the day. So, <laughs> when we have turned from sin, repentance, there are two implications. The one is faith, and the second is obedience. Mm -hmm. And did you know that the two are inseparable? These, these two boys are twins. I don't know the difference between them. 
but their parents do. And if there's a difference between faith and obedience, God knows. But for you and for me, for you and I, let's put it correctly, for you and I, they go hand in hand. Faith leads to obedience. And from <coughs> obedience, we hinge on to faith. <coughs> Hebrews 11, 1 says, For without faith, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We have not seen, but we believe. Amen. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Amen. Amen. In Hebrews 11 and 6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen. Therefore, with faith, it is possible. Amen. 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 He that cometh to him must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek. Seek, beloved. We cannot just come in and, and do a little ritualistic thing and think we're on our way to heaven. We've got to continually work at it. Amen. Continually call into remembrance. Continually draw near. We've got to do these things continually. We've got to continually get together with the saints. We cannot uh, this. I won't say that. I'm not going to get into that. Obedience. There are three aspects to obedience. The one is paying earnest attention to the Word of God. Giving Him 100% of my time. There are folk who read the Bible because of habit. There are folk who read the Bible and come out and, and, and have nothing for the day. But that I give my full attention to what I'm doing at that time. Secondly, that I submit to its authority. This is not the book written by Milton or William Shakespeare. This is God's Word. It is spirit and it is life. It is a life-transforming word. It is not a word that leaves a man good for ten minutes and then he's down in the dumps. It's a word that spurs me on and wants me to go forward. It's a word that challenges me. It's a word that is hard at times, but it is a word that keeps me on the road Amen. toward heaven. And thirdly, that I carry out the instructions there's no place for easy believers in, in God's Word. Amen. Amen. There is no place for once in grace, always in grace, in God's Word. John 10 from 27, My sheep hear my voice, Amen. and I know them, and they follow me, and I give to them eternal life. The intention of the original is my sheep are listening to my voice. Amen. Amen. And I know them. The Greek was often written in the in the pro act of progress of tense. Action and progression. Not stagnation, progression. My sheep are listening to my voice. And I know them and they follow me. This is present, it is continuous, it is an ongoing thing. I know them and I am, the intention is, I give, the intention is I am giving to them Amen. As I said, eternal life is eternal. We are the partakers. It depends this side of heaven whether we're going to get it. Carrying out the instruction of God's word. God has given us instructions. One of the instructions I mentioned earlier on is that we go into all the world. Is that we go out and declare. We can never make this world a better place and change this world as it is. This world is going to get worse. That doesn't mean that I should sit back and shirk my responsibility. That does not mean that the place of employment or the school that I'm at, there are schools that are called Bible schools, I've discovered, that are no different from secular schools. And whilst we may be at a quote-unquote Bible school, our duty is to declare the truth of God. Amen. There is some error that is even on campuses at Bible schools, and they need to know the truth of God. Amen. You and I are responsible. And 
Now hold it. I'm not saying you and I know all the truth. I'm not saying you and I are better than the next book. I'm saying that which God has shown us we need to declare. Amen. Amen. We should be declaring. When Saul came through time of testing, the giant stood on the mountainside, Saul and the men of Israel feared. Because Saul had not learned to look up. When hardship comes, which is our root, beloved? This teaching of prosperity is not of God. Amen. Hardship is going to hit especially the believer. And the believer needs to look up. Amen. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Psalm 125, 26 says, When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, they were like them that dream. Then with our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. Whereof we are glad. Amen. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams of the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Amen. He that goeth forth and bearing precious seed, weeping and bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, undoubtedly with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Amen. There's got to be some weeping. Today people don't want to weep. It is a shame to weep today over lost souls. But Jesus wept when he looked over Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. But today we've grown out of that stage. We forever learn ever learning, ever learning, never come into the full knowledge of the truth. Amen. 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 Saul looked on the horizontal plane before looking up. He did not look up, and a little boy comes to teach him. And I want to conclude with the attitude of this boy called David. David comes to this man, Goliath, this challenge that is posed man that says stands on the mountainside and challenge, challenges the children of God. The challenge today is out there to the household of faith. Amen. Satan Amen. is a challenge and Satan is posing the challenge and the church is in a slumber. The church has not awakened. Amen. I'm speaking about the church, beloved. He's coming back for a bride without a spot and without a wrinkle. He's not coming back for someone who does not know. He's coming back for someone who knows that he knows. Amen. 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 David says to him, I come to you in the name of the Lord. Amen. We have a name that is above every other name. A name to which every knee is going to bow. And every tongue will confess. It may be the tongue of Muhammad. It may be the tongue of Buddha. It may be the tongue of Mr. Moon. We do not need a moon. We need the sun. Amen. Amen. But they will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. David says, I come to you in this name. Because I come to you in this name, there is confidence in this name. You cannot declare without doubt, with certainty, the power of this word when you have not experienced the reality of God's word in your life. Amen. We have today what is called concept of theology. We have notions and ideas of theology. We do not need a notion, we need motion. Amen. The word of God needs to be put into action. It is action that is needed. It is not what I say, it is what I do that is going to make the difference. Amen. Somebody said, not my talk, but it is my walk. How I walk before the Lord. How I walk before the unbelievers that is going to be the challenge. David said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. This is the same David that said, blessed is the man. Walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. Or standeth in the way of sin is not sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Regression, retrogression 
instead of growth and increasing, there is retrogression. You know, this word is written twice. Brother Fred put it so beautifully last night, pulling from the front and the warnings pushing from behind. Promises pulling and the warnings pushing. There are warnings and we had better than pay heed to them. Amen. It will do us good too. But not going back in the things of the Lord. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate, does he ruminate he chews the cud day and night. When a man goes to sleep, he should go to sleep not with the things or with the problems that had hit South Africa. What, what is going to happen? But with the word of God. Amen. Keeping Amen. our minds on the Lord. Amen. Keeping our hearts stayed on Him. He can keep us in perfect peace. Amen. Our minds are stayed on Him. For they trusted in Him, says the letter. Psalm 23, concluding. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. And I, I want to conclude with the place of the person who knows that he's been pressing on. The person who knows that he is enduring. The person who knows that he's going forward. The person who is not waiting for somebody to lead him on. There are folk today that always have problems. You don't want to find out from them how is it going today because there's a problem. They don't have the joy of the Lord. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. Without his joy, we are nothing but a bunch of weaklings. His joy gives us strength. David says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Though I walk through the valley darkest death, he goes down, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. And then there's a position that David sees the child of God in. And the position that the child of God is in is an entire cover for the child of God. The front, the back, the side, and from above. David says before me, Thou prepares a table before me in the midst of my enemies. With all the enemies that there may be, even in your neighborhood, even in your school, even at your place of employment, don't you believe you don't have enemies? You have enemies. Amen. Amen. He prepares a table before me. He says on either side, I'm flanked by still waters. The noise of abortion, the noise of murder and baby bashing, the noise of dope increase, the noise of the economic problems, the noise of the rise of, of the Japanese economy and the fall of the American economy does not affect the child of God. Amen. Because I am flanked by still waters. Then he says, when I lie down beneath me, I lie down on green pastures. When the child of God goes to bed, he giveth his beloved sleep. Amen. There is rest for those who love the Lord. When we get down to lie down, it may not be the most comfortable bed. When we arrived in America, we had no bed. We sold everything on the other side. When we got here, we had no bed. We slept on the floor, but we enjoyed our sleep. And I'm, the Lord knows I'm saying this. I enjoyed it. Because when I got down to sleep, I knew that the keeper of Israel neither slumber nor sleep. Yeah. He guards our going out and also our coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. So beneath me, I have green pastures. Then he says, from above, Lord, thou anointest my head with oil. From behind, and being followed by goodness and mercy. Mercy speaks of the spiritual blessing. Goodness speaks of our material need here in this life. A man who is in Christ Jesus, a man who knows Jesus Christ as his Savior and his Lord, knows that he or she is in safety. 
I'm not talking about just living in your heart. I'm talking about living for Jesus. Knowing that I'm in Christ and doing the things that he has commanded me to do. We've got to do them so that we can inherit eternal life. Let's pray together. Father, the Lord, we thank you today for your word that is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our pathway. This word that is quick and